Ah, drone footage. The secret ingredient that makes an average looking vlog seem epic. And that's why we use footage just like this in our videos. It sets the scene, the mood. But with these amazing shots, it also brings in a lot of complicated rules and a little bit of stress. Now, we knew we couldn't just fly the drone anywhere. So before we started flying, we did a little bit of research. We registered our drone. We checked different airspaces before flying and make sure we don't fly in places it's clearly against the rules. You know, the obvious. We'd even go to websites of cities and counties to read their policies on drone flying. We thought we were doing everything by the book. Then we got this email. Hello, Sarah and Chris. My name's I'm an aviation technician at the Federal Aviation Administration Office here in Nashville. Please give me a call at your earliest opportunity. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Now, just to give you a little context, this is one week after we had moved into our new house. We were spending the morning watching A White Christmas, hence the cool looking robe, when we received this email from the FAA. If, if, if it's okay, I have a few questions for you. Right now, there's no fine or anything like that, and this is just like a informational warning, get, get your ducks in a row if we need to get our ducks in a row, because we do, I mean, I understand where you're coming from at saying that we, we earn money from our YouTube channel. The whole like recreational versus business, I just know it's like a weird gray line because we do it more as a, like we like doing it, like it's our hobby, but it's not our main job at all. Does that make sense? All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, you as well. Somebody anonymously reported us to the FDA her run not FDA, that's the Federal Drug Correct. Administration. Correct, I'm sorry, not the FDA. So Ron, who I just spoke to, very nice. Her job is to inform people because she said, you are not the only vlogger I have to talk to. Basically, where they're drawing the line is that even though our YouTube is sort of our hobby, because we make any sort of income from it, it is now classified as a business no matter what. There's no fine right now. There's like, they're not um, trying to, to stop us. They just want us to do the right thing. If we don't comply, the fine is $100,000. Holy cow. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm gonna comply. There's a quick <laughs> welcome home. We're gonna lose our house. Okay, so let's recap. The FAA contacted us explained how we were using the drone was in fact illegal because we were making money from YouTube. And if we fly the drone again, we would be facing up to a $100,000 fine or potentially higher. And we needed to apply for the Part 107 commercial license. Okay, let's be clear. YouTube isn't our main gig. Sure, we do get paid very little from YouTube because people like you watch a video like this, but it's not our main income. In fact, a lot of the times we just like to upload our videos to YouTube because that's a way for us to document our memories and, and I think that's where a lot of our misunderstanding came from. And so when you're flying a drone, like the one I have in my hand, and you make a penny, a million dollars, whatever the profit is, technically, you need to have a commercial license. The FAA even goes so far to say that if I were to take this drone and fly it to check the gutters in my house, that I would need a commercial license, even though nobody's paying me for it. Why? The intent. Everything comes down to the intent on why you're flying. You can only fly your drone without a commercial license if the intent was just to have fun. And as soon as you change that intent for something other than just recreational fun, that's when you need a Part 107 commercial license. So why is the FAA cracking down? Is it because they wanna keep everybody safe? Is it because they really just wanna make a penny off of everybody? What is the intent of the call that they made to us, to other YouTubers? Why are they cracking down on this? Well, we're gonna address this later in the video, but first, I've gotta go get the Part 107 license. All right, let's go.
Now getting your Part 107 license isn't really something you can just go pick up. You have to study for it. Enter Greg from the Pilot Institute. A few friends of ours mentioned how much they enjoyed his YouTube channel and highly recommended his course. So I joined right away. Let's get to studying. Are you ready? I, I think I'm ready. You're ready. So we're on the way to take the test. It's in Rome, Georgia, which is about an hour or so away from our house. I've got, I've been doing it like, this is really nice because the Pilot Institute has flashcards. So I've been doing flashcards on my phone. You're so prepared though. Like Chris, Chris is underestimating himself. He's taken two practice tests and he's aced both of them. So I, well, I haven't I'm really, aced, I've passed. No, you've done really well on them. <laughs> I'm a terrible test taker too. I get, I start overthinking. I get really He's anxious. He's taking the ACT today. I don't, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous, but I have two hours to complete the test. The test is only 60 questions, which means I should have a lot of time to think and ponder and maybe, I don't know, cry over the answers I don't get, but. It'll be fine. I, yeah. So what are I'm, you allowed, to, what's the lowest you can get, 70%? 70% is the lowest that you can get. So yeah. out of 12 questions, or out of 60 questions, I think I can miss 12 questions. I'm not allowed to take a camera. I'm not allowed to take any electronics into the test center. The next thing that you see after this will be if I, of joy if I, yeah, if I, if I have tears of joy or tears of sadness, <laughs> if I pass. So we shall see. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering whose car we're in, we had to rent a car because our van's a construction zone right now. It's the first place we've gotten in forever. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't needed a car. He passed, Whew. first try. So obviously this has been a crazy couple of months and we're really glad that whoever did report us reported us at a season in our life where we had no intentions of traveling. In fact, all the videos we have filmed, we already had plenty of drone footage that we didn't need to fly the drone. Mm -hmm. That was where we got off a little bit lucky on this. Yes, and the FAA did say for past drone footage that we've already filmed mm -hmm. that we could use it, we just needed to mark it in the description below. Yes, so from now on, we're free to fly again. Thank goodness. But today we're gonna to answer some of the questions that you all submitted over on Instagram. Things about what drones need the commercial license, height regulations, cost, why are they doing this, all that kind of thing that you guys submitted on Instagram. All right, get to it? let's do it. Does weight limit on a drone matter? So for example, the DJI Mavic Mini is, what is it, one ounce under the yeah. regulation for something, explain that. There is a DJI product, a little drone, and on it, you know, it's got the weight because it's technically one gram or something like that underneath the, the weight limit, but that is a common misconception. You still have to get a commercial license in order to fly it because you're still flying. And it always comes down to the intent. If mm -hmm. your intent of using the drone is for something other than just, I'm gonna teach my 13-year-old nephew how to fly a drone today for fun, if it's anything besides just fun, you have to have a license. If the intent is not just having recreational fun. Now, if you were out flying the drone and say an avalanche happens and you capture that avalanche on film and a news station says, hey, we wanna pay you for that avalanche footage. Well, technically you can sell that footage because the intent was just having fun and you just so happened to capture the avalanche footage. And the FAA is okay accepting that excuse only so many times. There's a cap on how many excuses you can use. It could look a little fishy. I mean, be honest, is kind of what it, yeah. if there's ever a gray area, the gray area is going to be ruled against the, the drone pilot. Yeah. The FAA is always gonna win. So if you're ever like, well, it's sort of a gray area. This is what we wish we had known. Yeah, noon. you will always this lose. Wish, this is what we wish we had known. You will always lose. If you're in that gray area, FAA is gonna say, you're messing up. Is there a height requirement? Like if you fly only to up to 100 feet, is that the same thing? Could you keep it below a certain level and it so do every, you need a license? So every drone has a cap of going up to 400 feet mm -hmm. and that is AGL, which is by the ground, 400 feet. Now, you. They're, um, <laughs> so, so you can go up 400 feet. Now, if there's an obstacle, you can go 400 feet above that obstacle to get around that. Where it gets tricky and where you're, and where you're uh, reading the charts, so this is great information where the Pilot Institute comes in because you know that you can only fly 400 feet in the air. But 
a lot of the charts are by sea level, not by ground level. Because you know ground shifts and changes. You have to be able to read the charts to know how far you can go. Now, if you're in different air spaces, those have different caps and you have to be able to read the charts to say, oh, I can only fly this high. But the tricky thing with the height, for example, we live next to a really steep mountain. It's a short mountain, but it's steep like a cliff. So if we were to go up, there's a park up here called Point Park. If we were to go up to Point Park, fly the drone off from that park and it instantly goes over the cliff, which is almost 2000 feet within, you know, not very far as it goes down the mountain. We cannot go off the mountain 400 feet out and then we'd be you know 2,000 feet above the ground we have to stay with the curvature of the mountain to keep with 400 feet of ground level so it gets Correct. kind of tricky kind of fast yes so you have to always be extra safe yeah is the license needed to fly drones in certain places for example state park no this commercial license is for anywhere I mean there are definitely places that do not allow drones to be flown this does not by getting this commercial license does not give you free reign to fly in places that are no fly zones without the license no. for example national parks yeah so you still have to call and get permission from whoever you're trying to wherever you're trying to fly but in fact if you have the commercial license and you decide hey I'm gonna take this off in a national park then the FAA can really come after you and be like, you know better, or you, you should really know, know better. better. Why does a commercial license matter? Just a moneymaker for the government, and how much was it? We get it, it's really easy to get mad at the FAA or the government or whoever's in charge of this because it comes across sort of hostile and sort of pointed and aggressive towards us. It's not a personal issue towards us. So first off, the FAA wasn't just trying to troll Chris and Sarah. They don't give a second thought about us. They've already forgotten us, probably. Let's start off with the price. Typically, it's gonna cost, is it $95 or $100 to take the test? It's around $100 to take the test. The testing facility Chris took his test at, which was, was a community college, they charge an additional $60 as a facility fee or something like that, which we understand. There was a proctor, he was the only person in there. Mm -hmm. You have to pay a little bit. So $160 to take the test first off. Then once he passed the test, we had to re-register our drone, but as a commercial drone. So that was just $5 the FAA pocketed. So. Right off the bat, the FAA is not really making a lot of money off of us, especially since they're not they're not getting a lot of you people off of YouTube like us to go and take the test. They're not making much money. I mean, the FAA is dealing with billions and millions of dollars, not five dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're not. It's not a money maker for the FAA. So we have talked to several friends who are pilots who have been pilots in the past or are currently, and there are things being lobbied for in Washington right now where it's stricter drone laws and stuff like that. This is going to be the future of drone flying. As drones become more cost effective and everybody wants one, I mean, I'm sure tons of people got them for Christmas this year. We, we know firsthand we almost hit one driving home Christmas morning. As more and more people get drones, they're gonna have to crack down to keep people on the ground safe, to keep pilots and citizens up in the air safe. It just becomes, there's a lot of new laws that are gonna be put into action. So what our understanding and our belief is that the FAA they're not out there trolling on YouTube looking for people like us. There's enough people who are anonymously submitting people like us, calling up the FAA. You can't even do it online. You have to call the FAA, give them the person's name, which would be our name, and show videos where we've flown the drone, and then they investigate into it. There's plenty of people out there who are submitting people anonymously. It's not just us who's been, you know, had their names submitted. The FAA is not trolling online. They could just have a hat, pull a name out of the hat, and our name happens to be the one that they pulled out of the hat that day. Yeah. I think our frustration comes from the point of we were already following the rules. We already sort of knew where not to fly and where to fly. Mm -hmm. And the, the people who don't, or typically the people who cause problems for other drone pilots are the people who don't know the rules mm -hmm. or really care for the, the rules. Like Sarah said, it's somebody who gets a drone for Christmas and they're just really excited to fly it because it's really cool to fly. Yeah. We don't think the FAA sought us out. We've been told by people who are very into aviation, who are aviation professionals in different arenas, that there are plenty of people's names being submitted, that they don't have to have secret agents out there. As some of y'all actually propose, you're like, well, how do you know they don't just have secret agents trolling online? They don't need that. There's enough better people out there who are submitting people's yeah. names to get them in trouble. However, all the people did when they gave us, submitted our name, they may have thought they were trying to hurt us. Well, one, it came at a really good time in our lives. We weren't flying our drone, we had just bought a house. Yes, it came during an exciting season, and it was sort of a Debbie Downer for like five minutes, and then we were like, whatever, we gotta get a license. Yeah. They just gave us a step up. And we don't want you to make the same mistake that we did. Yeah. And so if you're on YouTube, if you're a creator by any means, and you use drone footage, 
go ahead and get the commercial license because it will save you headaches, yeah. it'll save you frustration, and it's 60 questions, two hours of your time if you need we'll, that we'll long. We'll talk about that, we'll, talk oh, about that yeah. we'll ask about that. If you have drone footage from before you monetize your channel, do those videos count? That's a really, really good question. The answer is the intent. If you intend to put this footage in a video, you need to get a commercial license. Because your intent wasn't just to fly for fun, even though the nature of your videos is, I'm just doing this for fun, because that's what our channel is. Like, yes, we make a little bit of money, but it's a small percentage of our annual income. This is just a fun channel. Yeah. So you need to get a license. We hate the word intent, by the way, now. It's just so ambiguous. It's so great. <laughs> Can you still use drone footage that's already been recorded? Yes. Yes. We can. We can use the footage that was recorded before we ever had a commercial license that we already had on YouTube. That's not a problem. Even in the process of studying and getting the test or taking the test, we, the FAA told us you can still use the footage that is already pre recorded. If you record anything new with the drone before you pass the test, you cannot use that. In fact, that's subject to a fee. But yes. anything prior to that call at that very moment, we actually had to sign a paper saying that we had talked to FAA that this is the timestamp on it and we will not fire a drone anymore. Anything before that, is still free to use for yeah. us. And the FAA is honestly pretty gracious. Mm -hmm. She was super understanding. She was very nice. She wasn't accusing. She was just saying, these are the laws and we have to follow these. She even told me a story about a guy in Philadelphia who broke the rules and he continued to fly. He didn't listen to their warning and he got slapped with, I think she said $140,000 fine. So, I mean, it's not something to laugh about unless you just have a hundred thousand, you know, lying around. That's our, that, that's a large chunk of our house. We would have lost our house if we had flown the drone. That's why I, I put it in very real terms like that. Kramer would not be able to eat. Doesn't the FAA have better things to do? All right, so this is one thing we want to be really clear. It's really easy to villainize the FAA or anybody who comes at you with rules. We're not mad at the FAA. In fact, the lady who called us from the FAA she said, my job is to educate. She didn't, she wasn't calling and just pointing fingers. She was saying, you're doing something illegal. She's like, I'm here to help. If you have any questions, please let me know. And Chris actually sat on the phone with her and talked with her for probably 20 or 30 minutes. She took a lot of time to talk to us, just asking her questions of like, okay, well, what does this look like? Do I need to take my old videos down? You know, all these kind of questions. Their job is to educate. They're here to help you. Their job is to also keep other people safe, is to keep people in the sky safe, people on the ground safe from things up in the sky. Their job is just to help protect and enforce rules. No, they don't have better things to do. That's their job. I think if we were to get frustrated at anybody, we'd probably get frustrated at the people who reported us, but after our 15 minutes of frustration or whatever it was, we realized that we were gonna have to get this drone license anyway, and all it was gonna do is give us a step up over other people because we got our license. Yeah, and now we can sell our drone footage. Do whatever we want, not really, but. <laughs> What does it entail to obtain a commercial license to fly? This is all you. All right. So in order to get a commercial license, you have to register for a test and you have to take an exam that is 60 questions long. It's super, I'm not going to say the exam is super easy because you need to know your stuff, but the process is super easy. You register, you show up at this site and they stick you in a cubicle and it's on a computer and you have three multiple choice answers. And that's it. You have to get 42 questions correct on the exam, so you have to have at least a 70% passing grade. You double check this. Yep. Which, if you know your stuff, you can do it. We know people who have crammed overnight, took the test, and they passed. That's great and fine for them. I really kind of feel like that's setting them themselves up for failure later down the road. Because the, the pilot certificate only lasts for two years, and then you have to renew again. So you still have to take this exam every two years to stay current. Mm -hmm. So if you have a better idea of, like if you have more knowledge about it, if you have a better idea of what's happening, the, the easier the exam is and um, the better it is for you in the long run. Having a basic grasp and knowledge of it and not just cramming for it and understanding it is only going to help you in the long run. They may make this way harder for people to get drone licenses in the future, and so he's already a step ahead. So he learned the information well from the course. Is Sarah going to take the test too? Probably, I don't really fly the drone. I think I've flown the drone twice and we've never one time used any of the footage from it because I wasn't very good at it. I'd like to practice more. I think that I probably will take the test. I'm just not sure when. What did you do to prepare for the test and how long did it take? So like you've seen in this video, I studied through the Pilot Institute, their 107 course. The link is down below. And full disclosure, we are affiliates with them mm -hmm. only because it works. Greg and his team over there have done 
an amazing job. This honestly was probably the first online course that I have taken that I felt like, I'm like, this is a really, really good course. And I don't feel like I just regurgitated the, the information. I feel like I, I know it. it. Isn't it regurgitated? Regurgitated? I don't know, don't use it because I don't think you're saying so, it right. So I really feel like <laughs> I know the information. Like I walked out of the test and I'm like, hey Sarah, I'm a pilot now. And I know. yeah. So, you will. <laughs> oh, it's all how they teach things in that course. I highly recommend it. Even if we weren't affiliates, I would 100% point people towards them. We have lifetime access to this course. So as laws change or in two years, if we need to do a course refresh, we can go back and use flashcards. We can see what we can use the new content that he's provided out there of updated laws and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So when you buy the course, you're getting access to it forever. So For we're not going to just use it this time. We're going to use it in two years yeah. again and again and again. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this course is that not only if this is your first time taking it, he walks you through what that's going to be like. But then when it comes from two years from now, he's got a whole section on what the reoccurring test looks like and what to study for that. So how long did it take you to do it? Oh. So Chris got access to the course in... It was like late December, I think. Late December. And then he just took it in February 23rd or something yeah. like that. But you, I mean, there were weeks he wouldn't even touch it because things were so busy. Yeah. But how many hours of video footage is it? I mean, it's it's over 12 hours of video footage. It's, it's a lot of content and it's a, it's a lot of- Practice tests and quizzes. Lot, yeah, a lot of practice tests, quizzes. And look, taking this test to get your commercial license for a drone, it's a lot. And it can be a little daunting, especially for people like us who have a little bit of test anxiety and um <laughs> he was so cute he was so nervous it's like he's about to go take his act again or something he was like sweating I was, like, my palms so are sweating nervous. chris is a commercial pilot now commercial drone pilot he passed his part 107 drone test so enjoy some drone footage here have any questions we didn't answer about drone flying make sure to leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them for more adventures on the road and in our new home, be sure to follow along on Instagram and like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.